Cheaper and quicker internet is on the way. It's been described as a mega constellation, a vast network of satellites that will circle the Earth, rivaling SpaceX's Starlink project. China's G60 Starlink is off the ground. Uh, 18 satellites have been carried into space. It's expected to be the first of many missions. The project aims to put more than 15,000 satellites into orbit by the year 2030. The mega constellation aims to provide global internet access and data security. Uh, Jennifer Millard is an astronomer at Cardiff University and the managing editor at Fifth Star Lab. I would say this is just a very small part of China's space ambition. So the global economy for commercial space is worth about $360 million. And then they want to be in on this for about 10% of that by the end of next year. You know, we're talking extraordinary amounts of money. And yet they want to be going off to the moon with Apollo style missions, putting new boot prints on the surface of the moon. They've explored it so successfully with robotic missions. We only have to look at the Chang'e series of robotic missions that recently brought back samples of the lunar far side. They want to bring back a sample of Mars. They want to head off to asteroids and comets, all of these wonderful things, even the outer solar system. So this is just a very, very small part of China and all of their exploration. And how does this compare to what Elon Musk is doing with his plan? It's a great question. So it is very similar, but I think at the point of access, they're going to be targeting different people. You know, the Starlink one is more for US and their friends. And then, of course, we've got this one for China and their friends. It is providing global Internet access, especially for places where it's more remote and you don't have so much in the way of Internet access. Also useful in times of conflict, in times of stress, where we've got natural disasters, for example, as well. There will be, for Starlink, in the end, maybe 42,000 satellites. This one's looking more like 15,000. And, of course, it's going to take a long time to get to those numbers, but broadly, similar goals. Uh, and, and what's the advantage, if I can put it like uh, this, uh, low-flying satellites as opposed to high-flying satellites? Presumably they're cheaper. Great question. Well, in terms of cost, it's actually very expensive to build these mega constellations because of the sheer number of satellites you're putting up. You have to think about all of the launches that that incurs, as well as the cost of building these individual satellites. But the real advantage is in what we call latency. So this is essentially how long the signals take to go back and forth from us down on Earth up to the satellite and then back down again. For the high-flying ones, it can be 24 times as long to get a signal compared to the low-flying ones, like these mega constellations. So it's really all about speeding up those communications. And we love that in modern life. We want everything faster. We want it to happen now. So that's where these mega constellations come in. We might want it all now, but it sounds like space is starting to get uh, rather cluttered. I mean, how are they going to stop collisions of satellites? Yeah, so at the minute there are engines on board many satellites, not all, and that is a problem, on board many satellites. And so then these allow the satellites to move out of the way and then return to their orbits if they feel like there's a very small chance of a collision. And we're talking, you know, as soon as it gets to one in a hundred thousand chance, then the alarms go off for Starlink and then they move. Last year, Starlink did about 50,000 orbital maneuvers to avoid collisions, so it is something that's happening all the time. But inevitably, collisions do happen on occasion. Debris is produced, and that is the big question now is, how do we manage that? How do we clean it up? Do we drag these bits in somehow? Can we use lasers to change their orbits and burn them up in the atmosphere? Many, many questions, but it is something that many laboratories are working on to try and find those answers for us.